Hi everybody in YouTube land. This is Norma and today is my uh, 21st week post-op video. 21 weeks. Wow. Um, this week it'll also be my fifth month post-op and I was thinking I've noticed that a couple of people have um, made videos on what they still use at this time and just for the sake of saving money I was thinking of doing a video because I would like to talk about and encourage all of you that um, maybe are at different stages what you still need so that this way we won't spend money extra money that we don't need on those things and um, so I'll be doing that this weekend also uh, let's see the stats let's hit the stats this week I've lost ounces uh, last night I was at 177, so I thought to myself, oh yay, at least one pound. And then this morning I was 178, so I'm just going to leave it at no weight loss. And I'm going to have to kick it up because, you know what, Ta being accountable to yourself is important. And uh, this week it's um, uh, sort of like a week that we've been celebrating different things. And I've started to try different things. I started to... Um, eat watermelon and it goes down well and it I could put a lot of watermelon in my pouch and it just seems to go through just because it's a lot of water and I guess it's a good thing because I haven't had any problems with uh, not being able to use the restroom so that's a good thing um, I know I have to be careful because there are a lot of calories also in watermelon and correct me if I'm wrong okay but it does feel really good going down um, Another thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, dumping. Um, as you're trying new things, of course all of us are different and our pouches react differently. So one of the things that I've noticed when I do eat something that maybe I buy out in the street because I'm in a hurry and it might be something with chicken and maybe it might have be diced up and I'm not sure if it has skin on it. So if there is skin, my pouch will tell me and I start getting the foamies and that's when your mouth starts watering and you feel like there's a lot of uh, swallowing going on and then of course it helps you to burp or to dump uh, and all your fluids are going to your mouth because you know your body needs to wash it down and it's normal but it's not normal when you feel that you know pain and you don't feel comfortable and yesterday I was teaching I was uh, testing a student and I had just come in from lunch and I had eaten um, something, oh, Hormel chili and it was good and it went down fine but after that I topped it off with a little piece of mango and it tasted really good because it's fruit, I love fruit and the mango, um, I guess I maybe I had eaten it too fast or too much or maybe it just said no with the chili so I was wa my mouth was watering and I was uncomfortable and I'm testing this poor little guy sitting in front of me and my aide asked me are you okay and I said no I think I'm going to dump if I'm not careful and so I'm testing this little guy and I just kept using tissues to you know instead of spitting it out because I don't want to do something gross like that in front of my students I just kept putting it in tissues and I had a big wa uh, trash can full of tissues already a wastebasket and um, I remembered, oh yeah, the Tums, when you feel like you want to, you know, you're not happy and your mouth is watering too much, if you get Tums, the mint flavor, and you chew on it, and you chew on it, after a while it settles down and your stomach settles down a little bit. And I've noticed that three times out of four or five times that I feel like this, my stomach settles down and it, I don't, you know, have to dump. Another thing that I noticed is I, did, I had run out of Tums and I had watermelon and I ate the watermelon instead and I guess because it has so much water it flushed, helped flush my stomach and I felt better after. So there you go, there's two things you could do if you feel like dumping. Try some watermelon or an orange. I know that you know you can't chew a lot of orange but you can drink the juice off of it and then just you know the extra pulp, toss it out. Uh, and the Tums, the mint Tums, that will help you. Um, another thing that I've been trying is I've been experimenting with some of the carbs and what I can and can't. 
And today is Cinco de Mayo, so we're celebrating, of course. Why we celebrate Cinco de Mayo doesn't make sense. Uh, I think somebody else came up with an idea of why, you know, let's have a party. Oh yeah, it's Cinco de Mayo, it's uh, a Puebla, you know, and the French were defeated by the Mexican army. and. So anyways, um, I'd rather celebrate other things and, you know, for, for Mexican culture or whatever. Uh, but I guess it's a good thing for us to celebrate a little bit of all of us. But it's something that doesn't make sense. And maybe in Mexico City, people are like, why are they celebrating Cinco de Mayo? It's not something that, you know, we really celebrate all the time over there. They would rather celebrate the 16th of September, which is Ind Independence Day. But you know what? Party, party. <laughs> it's a reason to party. And let me show you this dress. My mother bought it for me, oh, a long time ago, 1990. And I really didn't like this color too much, but I love the embroidery. I love embroidered things. And I put it away and I saved it. And it never, it didn't fit me when I had the surgery for my legs and I was in a wheelchair, another story. And uh, anyways, now that I've lost all this weight, it fits. And let me show it to you because now I wear it because it reminds me of my mom. So yeah, Mother's Day is coming up and I want to show you the dress. So it's kind of pretty. Look, isn't that pretty? Let me move this chair. Isn't it pretty? And it's a little big, but I love it. It feels so good. And since it's Cinco de Mayo, I wanted the kids to see me wearing something typical. Um, they make these all over the place and the embroidery is really beautiful and I love it. It's just really nice, like a teal green. It doesn't look the same color on, on somehow on my um, thing, but it's okay. Anyways, and we're also getting ready to celebrate Mother's Day, so my kids are writing 10 reasons why I love my mom. And they're making flowers for them, uh, the tissue flowers that uh, we celebrate uh, Mother's Day with and make sure that they get this letter out to their parents, their moms. And uh, we have a bulletin board. I was going to show it to you guys, but uh, it's far down the hall. They made a lot of these beautiful tissue flowers and they, they wrote this once already and uh, they're really proud of their work. Um, yeah, so there's my week uh, for all of you wonderful mothers out there old and young and old for me like me and young happy mother's day feliz dia de las madres i hope you enjoy it with your children and that um, even if they don't buy you anything it's the beauty of seeing your children grow and grow up to be young men and women and doing a good job with them teaching them right from wrong and watching your grandchildren when they when they are born and aj I just love that video of Corey with you. What a wonderful example of a good father. I love that you took him out and you took care of him and let Rebecca sleep and rest, get, get some rest. You're an awesome dad. And I'm sure that little boy is gonna turn out to be just a wonderful little guy. Uh, that's how I felt when I saw my grandchildren too. And well, I just love babies, all babies. And my students, when they come in, uh, at kinder, I just love having them. And I have first graders, second graders, and third graders. And I used to do all the grade levels, but kinder is my favorite. I just love those kids, they're wonderful. Anyways, I'm rambling, as all uh, special ed teachers do, I'm sure. And all teachers, all of you. But anyways, have a wonderful weekend. And uh, I'll be seeing your videos next.